Hi everyone, welcome to the Earth Science Regents Review podcast series created by Hamix Middle School Earth Science Department. Today we're going to focus our attention on the water cycle. Now the water cycle is a cyclic event. It's an event that happens over and over and over again. And some of the processes are very easy to identify just by looking outside in terms of what the atmosphere is doing. Now the energy from the water cycle basically comes from the sun. The sun is going to heat up the majority of the water on the planet which we can find in our oceans, which is going to kick off a process called evaporation. Now, believe it or not, out of all the water that's on the planet, we can actually use less than 1% of it here on the planet for human consumption. So let's jump into the water cycle and see all the different processes that go into it. The first one's evaporation. And that's basically when liquid water from oceans, streams, lakes, okay, are going to turn into gas. That's what we call water vapor. Well, liquid water can change to gas through the process of plants giving off water, that's what we call transpiration. Together, transpiration and evaporation has a fancy name called evapotranspiration. And that's just the way that scientists explain how all water changes from liquid water to gas. Eventually, that water vapor is going to rise and cool to the dew point in the upper troposphere, and you're going to get condensation. That's when water vapor is going to change to liquid, and that's basically the formation of our clouds get enough condensation and you'll end up getting precipitation. That's when liquid or frozen water is going to fall to the surface. Once that water falls to the surface, it can do one of two things. It can either, either infiltrate, which means it's going to sink into the earth, or that water is going to travel as runoff, it's going to travel along the surface. Now there is a distinct difference between infiltration and runoff. Let me show you the differences. Soil is going to have certain characteristics in order for infiltration to occur. Soil is going to have a gentle slope. It's going to be unsaturated, which means it's not going to be filled up with moisture. It's going to be permeable, which means it's going to allow water to pass through. And there's going to be a lot of vegetation. In order for runoff to occur, you're going to need a very steep slope. The water is going to be totally soaked up in the soil, so the soil is going to be saturated. The soil can be impermeable. It will not allow water to pass through. And in many cases, you can have very little vegetation and you can actually have very dry land, almost like Death Valley, in which the land is so dry it actually becomes baked and will not allow water to go into it. You can even throw into the category of runoff, you can either th also throw into the area of concrete, asphalt, blacktop, anything that's going to be impermeable will not allow water to go into. So what's going to happen is that water is going to act as runoff. So that's basically the water cycle. Definitely no need to know the difference uh, differences in the characteristics and the differences in the different processes. So with that being said, thank you very much for joining me and we'll talk to you soon.